Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we can call it to order at six, no, not that far up, 34 by my watch. We were, we were talking earlier, Tom and Ben were talking about seniors lists. So news to come, please stay tuned. Tonight we're gonna go over some minutes, obviously. We're gonna get the state of emergency update for our town and our, our region. Uh, continue on with our trying to infill the town meeting warrants. Uh, we've still got motions, I'm sorry, motions and warrant. A little bit of the budget review, uh, some updates from both the board as well as town administrator. We've got an emergency dispensing site plan in front of us. The, the fire department wants to buy things that contain air that help them stay alive and uh, some logistics. And with the logistics, uh, we've got uh, town, uh, excuse me, we've got moderator as well as um, I'm sure the town clerk on the hook and then uh, restaurants that want to sell groceries. We have the, uh, we had a discussion with the Blue Heron. Um, they want to participate in uh, dispensing of some of those materials. So that said, we're called the order. We start with the minutes of the fourth. I'd appreciate that. And this was kind of like motions time. We approved and recommended Article 278, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 24, and then obviously the um, uh, consent articles. So those were all part of last night's, uh, excuse me, last week's big, big nut around annual town meeting. Uh, discussion about the minutes. Motion. Third. Second. David, are you muted? Second. <laughs> there he is. Okay, he got it. He's in. We got the peace sign. All those in favor of the minutes of uh, May 5, I signify by saying aye. 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 I heard chirping. I saw hands waving. It's all good. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, emergency update. Hey, hey uh, Caitlin, how are you doing this week? Good. Glad to hear. Mother's Day was nice, I hope. Yes. Yeah, Mother's Day was lovely. Thank you for asking. Good. Um, yeah, um, we, uh, we've been holding steady. Um, we just got the governor's order for the reopening in stages. We need to go over that. Um, we, the best practices um, for reopening retail food establishments. Mm -hmm. um, we have a meeting coming up next week. So we'll put that onto our minutes. Even I think they were just posted, so we'll probably address it in new business. Um, the new cases, I'm sorry, I just had to run upstairs. Um, so uh, we did You're have barely winded. That's good. No, I'm not winded. No, <laughs> I just my my thing That's was exactly right. She was she was out golfing. Yes. No. Yeah, I wish. Just getting back from golf. No, I was uh, I was standing behind my children homeschooling all day. It was fun. Nice. Yeah. Um. I I I I think teachers need a million dollars. Um. So uh, just to to let. Y'all know, um, we did have some, a little bit of press issue last week with uh, the press stating that Sunderland was not um, cooperating or not giving our uh, numbers to the first, um, joint, uh, hmm. joint, um, the MAPCO, M-A-P-A, Hawk Area Public Health Coalition. Yeah. The number that I don't feel that we should be giving is the death number because that requires us to know what the person died from. And that's on a death certificate. You can't assume somebody who has COVID-19 died from COVID-19. And I, I'm, I'm a stickler for the facts. And, uh, and, and so when they give it... <laughs> So I'm not really sure how all these other towns are do giving out these numbers. Um, 
So I, I, I have an issue with that. And I, I don't, I think the state has the information the state needs. And if the county really needs to get it, they can get things from the state and the state, the state gets them from the hospitals. Um, so I'm, I, and I just, so we, we have our numbers of open cases, numbers of closed cases. And that is something, they, they want numbers of recoveries. And once again, our public health nurse is not their primary care physician. So I, I didn't, I don't like that statistic. And, and I don't think that that's something that we should be reporting to account to the county. Um, how do we know if someone's recovered? <laughs> we know that if they're on MAVEN and whether they have done their quarantine and whether they are off MAVEN. Uh, so that's, that is what I've stated that we from Sunderland should report. Our positive cases, our community tracing, and our cases that are done in the state tracking system. Um, you know, if anyone wants to come to a Board of Health meeting this week to discuss this with me, they're more than welcome. But I'm kind of a fact-driven person, and I think everything else is not speculation. <laughs> so, um, and they can get numbers from the state if they want. So, you know, I have no problem with the reporter saying that Waitley and Sunderland are not putting in, putting in, you know, X information. That's okay. They can come to the Board of Health and talk to me if they want. Does anyone have any questions about that? No? Okay. <laughs> Good. I just, uh, as, a, no. As, a, as a member, as a member of the board, the answer is no. I mean, you're the Board of Health and... That, that's, that's the prerogative of the Board of Health, and there's a reporting function that you're abiding to and, and, and abiding by, and that's good. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't like speculation going out on, under our name. I just, it makes me uncomfortable. Let's leave it at that. Right. Um, Tom, Tom or David, any comments about Caitlin's actual question? I didn't want to just cut anybody off. No, I listened to our explanation, and I, I agree. You, you can't. You have to stick with tangible facts, and especially now, it's more important than ever. And you know, to go out and get sort of like wobbly pieces of data, it's not a good thing. And I think we've all seen some um, inaccurate reporting as of late with information, and I think this is a critical time to have valuable information, not um, you know, not unverifiable facts. You know, I think they're trying to get a hold of some numbers, but like you said, you know. You, you have to be able to verify that. So, I I personally think that um, it it's I the most important thing is that we keep out there that people understand that there's COVID in our, in our neighborhoods, um, that it, it it's around us, um, and I think that's what Kate and the Board of Health are are reporting. So I think that's for for the most important thing, and, and if that that we know that it's there. Matter of fact, if a town has zero cases, that to me just says that they've been extremely lucky um, that they don't have a case because we can all, I, I mean, you could you could be in your, look at the White House, the, probably the most controlled place all has two cases at, at COVID that, that came, a valet, for the, a valet for the president and the vice president's press secretary. What does that mean? That this disease can get anyone at any time and you just have to be careful. So, Caitlin, I don't have a problem. I, I think it's good that we know that, that the COVID is in the, in the area, and, and I think that it's, it's a good reminder out there. So, I, I don't have a problem. Okay, great. Um, I am just quickly... Um, looking up our... Uh, So uh, I don't um, I don't see oh our community tracing is mostly being done in house by our public health nurse uh, we if need be we will refer out to the CTC uh, which is the state which is the area community tracing coalition 
uh, funded by the state. However, as of right now, we are um, we are uh, doing okay with uh, the numbers we have. Uh, we have, and I'll, I'm gonna, I'm pulling them off right now. I also wanted you to know that I um, we called last Wednesday. We called an emergency board of health meeting to designate the police, the entire police department of Sunderland as agents of the board of health, and we needed to do that so that they could enforce on our behalf the mandatory mask order that went into effect on the 6th. If I didn't do that, um, I explained this real quick during the meeting, if I didn't do that, what they would have to do for every encounter they had, and they would get the encounters because the residents wouldn't know that they need to call the Board of Health, uh, they would call the police, and they have already, to say this person doesn't have a mask or somebody at a store there would be an altercation, you know, you can't come in and they can call the police. The police would have to call us, the Board of Health, each time to ask for direction on what we think they should do. Because they, I would have to each time have them act as an agent of the Board of Health individually each time. So instead, we needed the Board of Health to vote on making the entire police force agents of the Board of Health. What we did do though was talk with the police chief, who I can't tell you what a, an amazing partner he is and has been. Um, as a, he understands my goal as the chair of the Board of Health is education and compliance. Absolutely, positively not issuing $300 fines. That is not our goal. That is not what we wanna do. And he has instructed every officer he has and has sat down and spoken with them all. And I've spoken with him about, we want de-escalation, we want discussion, offer masks, discuss why, what the problem, what's the issue, what's the problem, how can we help, how can we solve this, etc. cetera. Um, there is, when I say it's community policing, it's community policing. They are acting as agents of the Board of Health when it comes to that. <laughs> and um, they understand what our goals are, they understand what we're going to be doing, what, what, our, what we want. And I fully am confident that, you know, uh, their policing of this is going to be as we would, well, we only have two agents. <laughs> we have two inspectors. And uh, I can't see me being called out there to enforce this. So I could be, I just don't want to be. Let's leave it at that. Um, so, uh, it was very nice of them to do it. So until we either send it or the state of emergency is lifted, they are, um, agents as of last Wednesday. And okay. I appreciate that. That's, that's a good update. And that's also yep. with respect to the police being the agents, that's, that's an important piece. So I think that's it for what we have as an update. Everything else is pretty. Pleasantly quiet. Yes, knock on wood. Exactly right. Well played, Caitlin, well played. Thank you. Okay, Tom or David, questions for the uh, Board of Health? Thank nope, you. all set. Thanks so much, Caitlin. Keep up the good work. Okay. Okay, next up for us, if I could move down to um, warrant article draft town, excuse me, draft annual town meeting warrant and articles. We had under article, again, we're continuing to try to infill the warrant as well as the motions. Part of our homework uh, from a couple of weeks ago was to get numbers from 
our waste treatment plant operators uh, about uh, camera, uh, non-destructive testing, uh, and camera work for uh, next sections of the sewer system. It's important to bear in mind any monies appropriated for the sewer system are paid by sewer users. So we have an Article 25 that was out there as a placeholder, and that was camera work uh, on the warrant. So we have to have a motion to uh, recommend. We have in front of us a quote from uh, Rich Brendan about uh, South Main Street from Manhole 9 to Warner Drive, uh, intersection of 16 to Garage Road, uh, North Main Street from Warner Drive to North Silver Lane, and then reinspect random areas that were slip lined in 2011, uh, totaling three, four, basically a mile a mile of uh, wastewater infrastructure, all below grade, combination of jet rod work, uh, as well as video inspection and some money for police details because they're in the roads, that makes perfect sense. It looks like Jeff, it's a total of $28,000. And again, the funding source will be sewer reserve. You gonna correct on that? Um, don't know that. That was discussed. So we have a value. Yep. And historically, uh, it's come from sewer reserve or through the maintenance fund that's appropriated each year on the sewer users fees. Okay. Tom or David, uh, concerns about taking these steps on the infrastructure for South Main to Warner Drive, uh, 116 to Garage Road, North Main to Warner uh, Drive and Silver Lane, and then reinspections of any of the areas from 2011's work? No, Scott, I, Scott, I, 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 I think the work needs to be done. I, I would hope that uh, at the 28,000 that we would uh, spend a little, Jeff, Jeff is very familiar with the procurement laws now, so uh, <laughs> he, he would uh, um, try to make sure the 28 seems a little on the high side to me, and, and I, I do have experiences, but I would say that we're bringing uh, uh, the next video forward for FCAT to be shown on public access TV, and it'll be riveting. riveting. <laughs> Absolutely riveting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would I would say I would say the cost is on the high side, but but again, you know you have, but it, it's like you said, it's all, almost a mile, so you do have to jet rod, so and you have to jet rod right in front, so it does take time to do it. But I I right. I, think, I I think is I would say that'd be a not to exceed price. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that that I actually like that uh, that language, Tom, and I looked at the the base number and then rolled up the total linear feet and went, Oh, okay. Got it. So some of it's jet rotting. Some of it is reinspection and that may take a little more time just to make sure those areas that were slip lined or, or um, have a different view. So, but I hear you. Um, again, from sewer reserves in this case here, uh, we had it on the warrant uh, and with no recommendation. So I'll go to the warrant first and then ask if there's any more discussion about it. No. I'm if there's it. not any more discussion, no. is there a motion to recommend <laughs> to include in the warrant or to motion. recommend on the warrant? Motion for recommendation with that language. Exactly. Yep. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now for the actual motions, uh, it reads, I gotta get, I'm flipping through my papers right now. Be patient. On the floor you go. Here you go. Move the town approve. Uh, hang on. Moved on me again. Almost there. Uh, vote to provide. 28,000 for sewer imaging and cleaning or take any votes, vote or votes in relation there too. And uh, I, just, I would like to, if I could, Jeff, 
have the language uh, included move from sewer uh, reserve or sewer maintenance fund, whichever is applicable. I don't think we have enough money in the maintenance account, Scott. You might not by last year's appropriation, but either way, either reserve or sewer yeah. reserve makes the most sense. Yeah. Motion. David? Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. That the language for article, I'm sorry, the motions for article 25. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Jeff, uh, as we go about inflowing a warrant, are there any more of these that we have numbers that are specific enough? If not, we'll move on to another item on the agenda. We do, and we have a couple other things. Um, Good job. I guess if I can go through um, numerologically. Uh, sure. Article five uh, is the transfer of free cash to capital stabilization. And I wasn't right. sure if you wanted to include that if um, based on the previous discussion of not exceeding um, what was raised for capital. I, I'm just cleaning up. It's, it's not adding anything, but I didn't know if you wanted mm -hmm. to keep that in for now. Um, as, as the warrant goes, if I could suggest that we actually keep that in yep. until we get our revenue picture come a little closer to uh, consensus, and then uh, we can always pass it over at town meeting. Okay. Mike, uh, does that work for you? Hey, Mike. I'm here, Scott. I'm here. Okay. So under, you know, we've, we've used in the past some of these, um, uh, we've used the formula in the past to take money from free cash and put it in stabilization or capital stabilization or other. Um, if we keep the article on and simply move to pass it over as our numbers come more to light, uh, are you comfortable with that? Right. Okay. Who's typing furiously, Steve? Thank you. Thank you. Very noisy typewriter. <laughs> What's the type? Furiously of? typing. What's I like it. Typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> What's the type? Buying of? SCBAs right now. Um, article. Okay, Jeff. Article seven. Um, there was a question of where the funds would come from, and the accountant yep. recommended that those come from free cash. So I filled that in okay. in the warrant. And that would, was already recommended. Um, I think the next one is Article 18. Um, I don't think that we have or will have by town meeting um, the, the right figures for the adjustments to the reserves for the CPC funds. Um, and I spoke with some folks on, on the um, CPA committee or CPC, and they were okay with holding off on, and not doing Article 18. So I just wanted to share that. Um, I don't know if you want them to actually take a vote on that or if you were comfortable, but it looks like. Sorry, we're going to say So, something? Tom, yes, Scott. Just ask Tom with res with respect to CPC. This is an adjustment, right, for each of the ex each of the mechanisms that we use annually. Yeah, uh, Scott. If if did you talk to, to who did you talk to, uh, Jeff? Did you talk to Sarah or Sarah and Jennifer? Yeah, I, I think if she's fine with that right now, Scott. That Michael, you don't have. I mean, Mike's on the CPC also. I mean, right. And it's always the, the accounting for CPC is complicated to say the least. So right. to get the number nailed down isn't simple. Um, so I, I think it makes sense to wait. I agree. I agree with Michael right now. There's no, I mean, it, I mean, if it was a pressing, pressing concern, someone would say something, but I don't think it's a pressing concern. Scott. No, no, it was, a, it was just to clean it up, but you know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. So. 
So uh, circling back to the actual hold, uh, we've got a recommendation, excuse me, a motion to include, we have a recommendation, we keep it on here and simply if the numbers don't line up, it's not critical and we pass it over again at town meeting. Just relief, I, I would say just take it off, Scott. Yeah, I mean, if there's no chance of ever getting it, why I'd have it there? But, and it sounds from Jeff, it sounds okay. like it's not gonna happen, so. Um. A board of selectmen going back, making, Changing a vote, Scott? Unheard of. Unprecedented, Scott. Unheard of. Motion. So I would, I would. Um... Wait for a motion to remove. <laughs> motion to remove. Uh, no, I want to have one, one more. I want to have one more bite at this apple to Go make ahead. sure that there's no confusion to the public that this is only an, an adjustment that is still making the motions. I'm sorry, still moving the money as proportioned as we have historically. I would say that you'd just go up two articles and it's an article uh, 15. Yep. I'm looking at it right there. Okay. Um, I'm fine with that. Any more discussion about retaining article 18? If not, is there a motion to remove? David, maybe you'll have more luck than I did. Yeah. Uh, motion. I, I needed this. I needed, I need a moment of clarity, Tom. A moment of clarity. I'll second that motion. All right. Good motion. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So a motion to uh, remove Article 18 with the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. <laughs> Carries the day. All right. I'm going to go turn the lights on. Hang on, everybody. Go ahead, Jeff. You can keep going. I, I was just going to say you mentioned two articles above that. I think we're really close to getting those numbers nailed down. Didn't have them for tonight, but I did want to mention that we are working on that. Um, it's my next. Uh, oh, another potential removal. Um, Article 20, snow and ice deficit. So over the winter and, and early spring, uh, there were votes to authorize snow and ice deficit spending. Um, there's a snow and ice expense account and a snow and ice materials account. My understanding is that the uh, expense or overtime account is um, slightly overdrawn, but there is a surplus in the materials. So if you wanted to remove this article and just do a transfer from one to the other, I think, um, we wouldn't need necessarily to have this article either. Mr. Chair, so existing, existing funds. Go ahead, Tom. I, I would say that, you know, I, I would take no action on this right now, but I would wait for a recommendation next week from, or the following week from the, uh, the, the treasurer accountant on that. And if we don't have to have the article, why have it? Right. Yep. I if think there's no was, deficit, there's no reason. Right. Go ahead, Jeff. I, was, I, I talked to the accountant, and, and I think that that was his recommendation is just to do the transfer. But transfer. If you want me to get uh, no. you know, something in writing or something. No, that if, if he – I mean, we get one shot to do it right. right? So if he's positive that we have the money, then I would say go ahead and remove it. I did say to wait until this weekend in case there was a big storm and they had to go out. Yeah. There, but fortunately <laughs> – Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. So what what I'm hear what I'm hearing is the accountant says there's money and materials that will cover the snow and ice deficit as homework. Jeff, could I just get what those? Could we just get what that value is? In so we have, not that we don't, not out of an air uh, focus of mistrust, but only to know what the value is. Yeah, I, I can tell you if you don't need exact to the decimal point. I can tell you about to the several dollars sure. if I now. Uh, I think the materials is yeah. in surplus about 450 and I think the snow and ice is a deficit, maybe 400 and snow and ice is deficit about 125 or 150. Okay. But I can get, yeah. I can so if, if it's a back. prerogative to, if, if your advice from the accountant uh, is that this is not in deficit, 
and that we don't have to have the article, then I would certainly entertain, re-entertain Tom's motion to remove it. <laughs> motion. Second. Again. Motion's made and seconded, again, to remove Article 20, knowing that we have enough funds in existing accounts to cover its snow and ice deficit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Streamlining okay. is good. Okay. And then the last... Jeff, I like it. You keep going. We won't even have a town meeting. You know? <laughs> I'm trying to keep it simple and short. Um, the last was... Um, last week, we had had an, the article about uh, borrowing for the drinking water supply, and I mm -hmm. removed that, but I don't think there was ever a vote to remove it. Um, and there was a vote to include it. So do you want that on the fu future ones or? Hang on, let's just see which, which was the article itself. I'm looking at it, it was It was 26. CPA. It was the last one um, before the consent articles. But you won't see- And this it. had to do with us. Yep. Yep. Got it. So you need to vote to actually have it removed from the original warrant. Right. Yeah. I can, Easy. I can make Let's some motion if and you want. do that. Again. Thank you, David. Second. Tom, you get a second. I, I didn't. heard it. All those in favor of removing the original borrowing authorization for three to I, zero, please. Thank you. That was, that's a that's a town administrator keeping us on the on the on the hook. That's good. Trying. That, that's what I had for the for the warrant and motion. Trying. So so, Mr. Chair. Yes. Do you want to ask uh, the moderator and uh, the town administrator what what their plans are for town meeting? I want to have one more piece on the warrant, Tom. No, I'm sorry, on the motions, Tom, and that oh was my God, we include, you, you just kill one more. Words. Hang on. Jeez. That's no, no, no. So we, we, we did, we did warrants and motions, right? We did, we included the warrant piece, but we didn't actually put the motion in place for the sewer work. We did one authorization, but not the second. I'm oh, for the recommendation of it? Are you? We voted the exactly. money. Exactly. Do we take two votes? I have two votes and, oh. and on the motion to add from sewer reserve. Oh, fine. We're all good then. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Let's run with the logistics of town meeting. Mike, how's it going out there? <laughs> Mike? Uh, uh, well, you guys tell me. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure, you know, the outdoor, the possible possibility of an outdoor venue has been discussed. Uh, outdoor venue presents two problems, um, which would be weather and whether we can hear anything, which yeah. is the same issue we have when we're inside. So that remains the same. Um, Fair. And where were we thinking? Um, would be a good spot if we did do it outside. Jeff, do you have any, do you have any thoughts on that, Jeff? Yes. So I, I spoke with FCAT. They do have um, a, a PA system, I guess, um, speakers, two wireless microphones. Um, I think that regardless of if it's indoors or outdoors, um, you know, we're, there would certainly need to be uh, health and safety con uh, considerations for people speaking in a microphone, cleaning the microphone, wearing masks, um, all of those things. I think that, um, you know, I know that, that the town clerk has been looking at, at costs for outdoor venues for staging and um, tents if there are, you know, to, to deal with weather. Um, 
we'd have to find a location where there's sufficient parking in immediately nearby. Um, I know that Deerfield is looking at doing an outdoor uh, town meeting. Um, I believe it's on the 9th, I think, um, but it could be earlier. I think you're right. Just, uh, what about the pavilion behind the elementary school, like setting up this, like the stage there and then seating, you know, flowing out from that. So, so Mr. Scott, ele electricity would be a big thing. Where, where's the only place that we have electricity for our fields? It got removed with the softball work that happened at the elementary school. So you have to stretch out from the building. Yeah, but do you have, do, don't, don't we, don't, we, we, we uh, have the fall festival. We used to have the fall festival. You got electricity out here? Behind the, the behind the town office building, yes, that's absolutely yeah. true. There's, we got, there's, and we got plenty of parking here, right? We can park them. We can, yep. I mean, we can park in the library. We can park in the fields behind it. And 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 I don't even know if we need a stage. I I, I mean, I, I mean, we we we. If worse comes to worse, we stand up on a back of a flatbed trailer. If the moderator wants, I mean, he may be afraid of heights. I don't know. No, I'm, my biggest concern is not being able to hear anything. So that's um, <laughs> having to talk over the spring peepers. Have it, whatever. Um, so, so I, I think could we do? We could do it here, Scott. Hmm. Could we at the town office building behind it? There's certainly infrastructure to do it there, and and as far as conversations versus voting, you could you could vote with two different pan LEDs, one color, you know, yes, one color, no, or one color, yes, and just call it a vote. And, and I mean, and you could, I mean, I could talk to Jim Ewan to get his uh, line striper and you, you, uh, you draw some parallel lines six feet, of, six feet apart and you do a uh, perpendicular line six feet apart and tell people stand in every other, every other uh, spot and they bring their own chairs. So we could be could could be the first time Sunderland had a life size chess match outside. Well, I was gonna I was gonna think it's more like the uh, in the fall festival when they had the cow plop contest, but all right, chess match is fine. Yeah, um, pretty sim pretty similar. Yeah, so It'd definitely be cow plop. Yeah, well, but but I mean, you could we could and and, and I I would say Michael, my only reason I I like the idea of having it outside is I I think. And again, I don't know who, but when they, they say there's less, there's less transmis, transmission in an outdoor environment versus yeah. a closed environment. So yeah, yeah, I've heard the same. And, and um, I, I don't know if we need to, I don't even know if we need a tent. I mean, a tent well, I think the nice. trouble is you're not actually going to fit that many. If you do the spacing thing, you're not going to fit that many people under a tent. That'd not be a right. pretty, I mean, we get a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, even if you plan on 150. Right. But that's a lot of square footage and you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to do it under just one tent. Um, even a decent sized tent. I don't think. I mean somebody needs to do the math, but you're trying to be six foot in every direction. There's thirty six square feet per person, so that's a lot of room. Um, I agree. I, I think I think we can do it. You know, I think we could do it, Scott. So what happens if it rains? Postpone it. I guess, yeah. Yep. Right. Because you, you, you can set a rain yeah, date right off the bat. Right. What do you uh, think, Mr. Ma um, the only other thing So, Jeff, could you look and see? Go ahead. I just wanted to mention that um, there is legislation pending. Um, I think it's passed the Senate and not passed the House yet that would allow uh, municipalities remote. to hold town meetings not within the borders of their town. So I just wanted to, if we have a good place in town, that's great. But, um, you know, if, 
if we were really concerned about weather, for example, we could contact UMass and maybe do it at the Mullen Center where there's plenty of space and, and spacing. Again, that's indoors, so it might not be as nice as outdoors, but if that, that's a potential possibility um, that I'll, I'll keep an eye on if the legislation passes. I always, it, wanted to be, I always wanted to be on the basketball court at the Mullen Center. So. I think the skating uh, rink would be fun. The skating rink would be good. Yeah, That'd there you fun. go. <laughs> Probably the only way. You have to skate up to the mic. So, can I ask up? Uh, I can't skate, so. Up, yeah, Sonia Henning. Sonia Henning style. I love it. Can we uh, talk about our posting requirements, Jeff? So, we posted this already. And the warrant's about to be hung. We don't have any trouble with the posting being changed at this hour, do we? I know we've got emergency rules, but easy. It hasn't been posted yet. Um, I Great. guess the other thing to mention is, is changing the location is one thing. If we're talking about doing it outdoors, do we want to consider a different time? Um, you know, it's, it's 7 p.m. on a Friday night. Is that Move it back earlier. triple E, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. We did talk about Saturday was floated, um, a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. I like that. Saturday Fair. right after election. I like that, Michael. Yeah, that, would, that, that would wrap up town business in one day. In theory. There you go. Well, as long as it's okay for so the town clerk. So the election still. So, so, Mr. Scott, as long as the town clerk has enough time. Let's, she, let's see if she's, she's listening on. right now. Yeah. yeah. Is she closing the polls earlier that day? Uh, the polls are noon, open 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 to 12. 12. 8 to 12, so, yeah. So, so you could probably go at noon, I mean, uh, 2 o'clock, but you get to give her a couple hours to get all that stuff cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Right. Even if we bumped out to four o'clock, that should still give us enough time. Yep. Especially with the way we're whittling away articles, right? And if people are getting hungry, <laughs> they don't want to move things along, so that's okay. Ah, excellent point. <laughs> excellent point. The be stomach growling in the. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's look at uh, talk with the town clerk and see if four o'clock on six six makes sense. Now that that's a tongue twister. <laughs> and, tell, and tell her uh, behind here, town office. I yeah. think so. All right. Jeff, let us, let us know next week what, the, yep. what she says. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, moving on off of warrant and uh, Mike, have you had a chance to look at the warrant and motions in draft form? I did it. Okay. And the list Anything is jump short, out? So it's good. Anything jump out is glaring? No. Okay. No. Uh, all right. I see I see Deborah down in the in the in the, the bottom uh, right my right corner. And uh, let's 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 jump down to restaurant selling groceries. So this way here she doesn't have to sit and listen to us wax eloquently yeah. in philosophical fashion. It's enjoyable. <laughs> You're a glutton for a punishment. It's it's good yeah. to see a little representative government working. We well, try. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So uh, you yep. send in a note, and it looks like uh, with the the emergency declaration, one of the things the governor is allowed for, and the the House and Senate have passed, is the ability for restaurants to sell a variety of things. And you're coming forward in this here. It says groceries. Did uh, I capture that correctly? Yes. Yeah. You know, to uh, we have clients who uh, would love to just get items that we have. At, you know, we have access to mm -hmm. actually m more than what a lot of grocery stores because they're running out and such. Right. Um, so, and we have some unique offerings that people won't get in a stop and shop or what have you. So yes, I, I, you know, I've been paying attention to the state and to kind of Boston and Somerville. Um, and, and what they've said is, yes, you can do it. Just go through the correct channels. Uh, and so that's what I wanted to do. I know 
people in our neighboring towns are doing that. Uh, I don't know about other folks in Sunderland, but um, obviously the restaurant needs to create as many revenue streams as possible at this point, since even when restaurants will open up again, it's going to be, I mean, just to, you know, May is our busiest month, for example, and uh, we'll be lucky if we, even with doing, uh, you know, what we did on Mother's Day and takeout, we'll be lucky to, to do 15% of what we would do. So and Deb, when they do open Deb, again, it's, it's going to be at- Deb? Yeah. Right now, um, we always entertain our businesses in town if they want to make a plug. So if you want to tell people that uh, Blue Heron's open for uh, takeout, the go Blue ahead. Blue Heron is open for takeout Thursday through Sunday. Starting this Thursday, we did take out uh, on the weekend for Mother's Day, and uh, we actually had to close it out because we did almost 200 people, which was phenomenal. People want us to stay alive as we want all our little businesses to do, but we have to create, you know, we got the PPP and that's a wonderful thing that'll run out in two months. And then we have to be able to stand on our own and without creating revenue streams, new ones that could last you know, a year. I mean, I don't know how long, as none of us know, um, when, when, um, what this, what this uh, new world's going to look like. So I just wanted to go through the channels to get your approval to be able to do that. I certainly would like to sell uh, Mike's products and, you know, local farms that we use, uh, as well as flowers and yeast and meats and cheeses and what we carry. Uh, my preference for, you know, we use a lot of um, meats that are sustainably raised. Uh, and I have my, the places we get them from, the, um, our purveyors I've already talked to, they're willing to cut and cryovac. Even though we do our own butchering in the restaurant, butchering not from whole animals, but from primal cuts, um, you know, uh, it's it would be easier for us to just get those cut from the purveyor and have them cryovac because people this would be a pre-order uh, people not coming into this restaurant um, so it would be curbside I don't really want to get into delivery because that's another whole expense uh, with insurance and such so um, I just wanted to come and find out what I needed, what I needed from the health department. I did speak with Steve. He didn't think there was much more that we needed, but I need you all to tell me that. You know, we have, of course, the common vigilers license, but we also do have a retail license. Right, right. I was, I was, when I was reviewing the agenda, I thought to myself, well, you have a Vic and you have a retail, so what impact does the town, what impact, what area of impact does the town have inside the emergency order? And I was hard pressed to find any. I appreciate you coming forward and asking, and I'll push the question out to Caitlin, who's sitting out there in Port of Healthland, and see if there's anything that comes to mind from you. Um, I think the only thing is, is um, well, there's going to be a couple of things with inspections um, as far as um, and labeling, FDA labeling with the anything you sell. Um, the other thing, though, might be a, something zoning, possibly, uh, but I'm not sure. I think we're going to have to look at that, um, but maybe not um, because you know, uh, if you're zoned to sell, you're zoned to sell. Um, I just know that I read the Somerville, I read the other ones and they, they had zoning issues, but maybe they weren't, obviously you're right across the street from a store. So zoning might not be an issue. Um, I would just say, um, if we, you contact, uh, contact us, we will have a meeting, contact the Board of Health uh, with like a plan on how you're going to be getting your orders in and giving them out to the people, that kind of stuff, you know, real tangible. And 
um, you know, we know you keep your food at the right temperatures, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, that all has to be kind of like laid out because we know you know how to do a restaurant. Right. <laughs> this is just very slightly different. So yeah. we want all our job at the Board of Health is to make sure that you, we always say um, is to make sure that you don't people don't think they got sick. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, people don't, they don't have to actually get sick. They just have to say it. Right. So right. you need to, we like to keep our business owners uh, safe by saying, no, 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 we did X, Y, and Z, just like we were supposed to. So that's what we'll get together. We'll so should we, should I call you uh, and do a separate meeting with you and Steve or, yes. or just you? Uh, no, no. It's, I mean, Steve and I will get together. We'll figure out what it is we'll need. And then you'll, um, we'll have you just come to a meeting. We'll, we'll, we'll contact you first. Okay. So um, there's, of course, a sense of urgency because yes. I, uh, I'd like to um, get this. I'd like to be able to put an order. I mean, put an order sheet out so that people could get something a week from this Saturday. Okay. If that's I'll possible. To, I'll text Steve tonight. Okay. Okay. And then, listen, call me. Uh, I know, uh, I mean, I can give you my, I don't want to give you my number over this, but. I think Steve's got everything, right? Uh, yeah, he should. And uh, Jeff, it's Jeff, right? Yep. yep. You right. have the number. Okay. So you could call me and just tell me. And there's also the restaurant number and leave a message if yep. no one's there. Um, yeah, I just want to, you know, I'd like to cross my T's and dot my I's so that none of that is a concern. Um, so uh, for items we sell from the restaurant, I mean, takeout is just like regular restaurant. Right. And there's, there's not that kind of labeling and such. Uh, but if we do foods to go, like, it, uh, do we need to put what we have in that? Yeah, you, yes. You have to put an ingredient list in that, but Steve's got all that. And it's, you know, it, it's really, once you have the list, it, it's, it, it's not hard, especially for someone. Right, you know, right. You get the kind of food you got out to these tables. <laughs> this stuff's not hard. No, no, no. You it's, it's know what you need to hard. Just the little details so right. that we, you know, every new thing we do is a new system. Right. And so we just want to make and create the, the most efficient system and safest system. Right. I mean, generally what we have to do as well is first and foremost, keep my employees safe. And as, I mean, we, we're lucky we have enough space right now to keep our cooks at basically six feet apart. They wear mask gloves, have their restaurant clothes in their lockers in the restaurant, change that. But you, the, the same thing. I mean, we don't wear masks before, but gloves we would use. Yeah. Um, so uh, another question, if I could, just while I have folks here. Now, the a lot of towns, and maybe even the state, I'm not sure, have been saying that when there's outdoor seating, if you have a parking lot, you can extend outdoor seating. Well, I have a lot of parking lot. Is that something I could do if that's all we have for a while is outdoor seating? Mm. What would I need it to do? Might, I mean, might. So, so the only thing that would jump to mind there would be under the LLC for alcohol. Right, because your space is defined you for have alcohol. To, yeah. and, and you have to have a somewhat of a fenced area, but well, you have correct. It. And the other the other thing the other thing also is that um, so that there's a couple of questions going going back. Jeff, do you do you have the executive order that the governor signed? Have you read through that? Uh, with regard to the restaurants? Yes. Being able to sell. Um, I don't know if I can pull it up, but yeah, I've read through it. Well, because my, my, my only point, I, I one advantage of being in the town clerk's office is it has all these neat little books here. 
And so I pulled up the, uh, the Sunderland code and for, and, and when you talked about permits and stuff, um, a retail business of that size, you would have typically in a C1 district, what that is, you'd have to have a, um, special permit for a retail store. But my, my guess is it probably is in some place. And I would think that someplace in the governor's executive order, he pro they probably addressed a lot of that, a lot, that lot of that stuff. So I, I, I would go, I would go look at that first. The, the thing about, um, when the, when the blue heron went in, it was under, we had uh, a number of stipulations. So we probably have to look at those stipulations. Um, and I think that the LLC about you, you would have to probably apply for an extension because of the defined area for the serving alcohol. But if you're not serving alcohol in those areas, it, Probably not a big thing, Scott. Yeah, I, I, I just, I have just recently read that there seemed to be a, I mean, some towns are talking about blocking off streets, in fact, to allow for outdoor seating, certainly mm -hmm. places in Boston and such. And if, and I don't know what they're doing generally about the, you know, the ABC, uh, if they're saying loosen those rules around that, but it sounds like that's what happening and i didn't again i'll i'll come back to you if that's in fact what they're saying to do but deb i i will tell you one thing like, like when we talked on the phone the other day that that our our goal is to try to help our businesses any way that we can right. so if you stay on if you stay on top of that and you keep us keep us one one foot ahead because it's going to help you but it'll help some of our other businesses also so sure, sure. and i'm thinking the bridge side i'm also thinking uh right. Bubs and demos and and everywhere else. So right. so we're, we'll definitely tr if you if you help or or if you work with the other restaurant owners in town, uh, Wild Roots, whatever it is, sure. we, we will be. I mean, there's nothing more important right now than find help us find ways to make business possible for you guys. Uh, it's it's thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. So um, thank you and and then Caitlin, you'll be in touch with me and and. Yeah. Steve or one of you. Yep. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you so meeting. much. Have a good night and All right. keep up democracy. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so, let's Mr. Chair, flip Mr. over Chair. to Mr. Chair before sure. I move on. Jeff, could you uh, could you when you get that executive order, could you email that to us so we could take a take a look at it also? Yeah, uh, I don't think that there was anything specific in. Uh, I'll I'll double check. There have been several executive orders that there was anything about outdoor dining other than to encourage that that's a possibility because it's outdoors. Um, I think Caitlin had Caitlin had a good point when she talked about zoning and stuff like that. And, and it'd be interesting to see if that the governor and his people took that into consideration as well. Yeah, I, I don't recall seeing anything like that. And I know that Somerville, I think it was Somerville, they in, in the city executive order, they said we are waiving zoning and permitting requirements for groceries to do retail. And so I'd imagine that that's something that um, the select board could choose to do as well. Um, under the emergency powers, if if that's true, could we have could we have the uh, the the zoning board or the planning board rep or both next at our next meeting so we can de discuss that with them and and we could put that proposal up on the table if that's okay with the chair. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and see if we can move this forward. She, uh, Blue Heron expressed an interest to be in business on the retail side you know, a week from Saturday. So whatever we've got to do to be agile about this makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Jeff, you want to talk about budgets? Well, oh, go ahead, Tom. I, and again, you know, and, and, sometime, and sometimes I think that, you know, the select, the select board has certain things, has, has certain obligations and, 
But, but I think one of the things is that when, when we have residents and or businesses that come into town, and our, our goal is, is to try to help move their their concerns or their their thoughts or, or their forward. And, and sometimes, and I think that's what the biggest power of being on the, the select board is that if there is anything, um, is that you, you, have the, you have the ability to help people when they need help. So I just think that's what we're trying to do. Great point, Tom. Um, okay, so we've got homework going out. We'll see what those the governor's orders have got as well as our own declaration of urgency. And I say a KP law, again, sending out their weekly dispatches uh, about what we should do to keep ourselves out of the newspaper. So read that, read this week's, which was today. So figure that piece out. Okay. Uh, Jeff, I want to talk a little bit about revenues, right? Our revenue forecasting. We know we've got budget numbers. We've got articles in the warrant and the motions, uh, and they all rely on some sense, even if it's a, uh, a sixth sense about what revenues may or may not look like. We've got a, a sheet in front of us that has a 20% reduction in state revenues to the town. And I see a slight decrease as well in assessments. Um, and it leads up to about a $342,000 gap. Then there's a second, which it looks like it's based on the historical trend, 9%, 9%, 11%, 9 and 9 which puts us at 125. I'd like to have a discussion with the board about what our sense into those numbers uh, we want to move forward with because it's time to start plugging numbers in. My, well, my, well, I, would, I, would, I would say that you, that you go with the worst and, and, and you look at, and, and you look how we can make the budget happen using the take the worst, worst case scenario, Scott. And it, and, and then yep. if numbers come better than that, we always can add, um, but you have you have to have an idea of what what the worst case is. So yep. start, start at the worst case, and and if you're saying that we're what you said three forty three fifty forty two three forty two and and take those numbers and see if we can make if we can make the budget work with what we have presently and or if we need to go and we need to work with our departments and uh, see if we have to change something. And. Uh, uh, building on that, Jeff, you've already worked with departments to come up with 70 plus thousand off of the town side. Yep. And, and last week, the select board graciously added some additional savings by foregoing your salaries, <laughs> offering to forego your salaries. Um, it, there, there is one other thing that, that I wanted to mention in, that's uh, not they so get good. salaries? <laughs> Yeah. We do. It's true. It's it's in the secret account, Caitlin. Mm. The, the and, black, and, and you and you and you voted for it every time you go to town meetings. But we don't tell you Thank where you it for is. that. I have to pay attention more. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> hey, Article Jeff, three. Hey Jeff, you can have my two hundred dollars too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, you running for? You must be running for re-election. <laughs> um, I, ju I just wanted to note that in the um, unfortunately on, on the expenditure side one of the things that was not included um, that should have been it was the uh, payments for the new fire truck which are fairly hefty um, yeah that's that excluded though oh it is okay mm. yeah Okay. It needs to be accounted for totally, but it's excluded debt. Okay. Yeah. So I won't be under that. That's already been raised and go ahead, Tom. If you want to see Steve come back on the line really t quick, tell him he has to give it back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. That, that scared me. So uh, you can, yeah, you, scare you, me. Could, you could talk with, talk with, yeah. Talk with Brian, Brian about how to show that on the revenue sheet. It should yeah. show up in the debt piece. Thank you. And it should be a, a line to line, one in, mm -hmm. one out. Thank you. 
Okay, so what I'm hearing is let's let's move forward planning on a 20% reduction in state aid. Uh, anybody who read the paper last week saw that in this past reporting period, the state's revenues are off by 50%, five zero, while they bleed red ink uh, in every other category. So uh, let's let's talk with respect to guidance to schools at this point. So Peter or Jessica, what's the percentage of state aid the school gets and how do we want to approach that? I think uh, it, it's hard to talk about it actually right at the moment because I don't have any of the information that you got, but I will say we've got a meeting scheduled for Thursday night and it would be, obviously one of the items on the agenda is the FY21 budget. And it would okay. be real nice going into the, you know, before that meeting to have, you know, laid out for us just what the numbers are and what, you know, mm -hmm. what, uh, what you're looking for. Um, yep. Because I think, I think that's the way to, to move forward on this for, for, from as far as what our part needs to be. And Frontier, I believe, has so a I, if, Frontier, if, I believe, has a meeting tomorrow. And whether you can also get something to them tomorrow morning to help that discussion move forward. So I would think, Peter, we would approach it thematically versus, or thematically versus, uh, with a, a, a number. I think it was Deerfield that simply threw out, you know, give us a blank value. Um, I would I would suggest that we take a look at from the school administration look at the percentage of value they get or dollar value they get from the state and prepare on a reduction of that percentage. The budget that we have in front of us right now, we're looking to get, you know, $342,000 gap covered somehow. I would be hard pressed to go to town meeting to put that all out in the form of reserve use or knowing that at 22 is going to be even harder than this coming year. So, you know, if you get a, a make a, a pie chart, I got a pie chart in my head. Say you get, you know, 38% of your, your revenue is from state aid, whatever that 38% is, and I'm making it up, uh, you know, prepare on a reduction on the state side. I would not expect that to be shifted back to the town side because we're not going to be able to handle it either. What you're talking about as far as state aid for education is really what your chapter 70 number is. And I believe that's something in the mid to higher 800,000 range. Um, and so 20% of that is about 170,000. I would think that that's the kind of dark sky scenario we've got to be planning on. Now, and again, I think it thematically, Peter, versus just, uh, you know, wh where does where does the money come from and where is it going to be most impacted? I think what I'm hearing of the board say is that, you know, we're going to plan on our worst case scenario and hope that, you know, if something does come up, we can we can be reinstalled. But the towns have made the first bite at its reduction. We're going to make, a, I'm sure, another bite. Uh, and on the revenue side, we've heard for about a month or so, and, and we've been, I personally have been you know, dangling in the wind wondering where to go with this. I think if we're looking at a 20% reduction, it shouldn't get any worse than that. And if it does, well, hell, we're all doomed. So from this administration's perspective, take a look at that chapter 70 and, and figure out a percentage of reduction. And that should be the preface for the budget development. And if it's not, then our head's just in the sand. Thank you, Oak. Tom? You, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough one, Scott, because um, there, there, we, we really, there, there haven't, there haven't been any, any, any real uh, guidance from coming from Boston as to what's going to happen. I, I would think Peter and and Greg and and Jessica. I think one of the the one of the things that that's good for education is that there, there's probably going to be a lot of um, 
people backing both legis you know legislators from local and also the state level are going to be um, trying to maintain the, uh, the the level of funding for education. I I, I guess the only thing that we can say is um, if you know if if all of a sudden education doesn't get hit as bad, you know they they find some money and they're not. You know, they're not taking away from everything else that they support in the town. Although we don't get a lot of money from the state as it is now, revenue. Right. And right. For the town. Um, we do get some, but I mean maybe maybe, you know, we it's the the things for the schools are pretty quick, you know. And in the fact that you're not you're not having to look at that that full twenty percent um off. But we gotta start I I think we have to start some place. Or Peter, I mean, you've been in finance for a long time. What What do you think? We're, we're, what What would you suggest for us to start? No, I think that uh, I got no issue with you know you gotta you gotta confront whatever reality might be, um, and so I've got you know I've got no problem with you know we 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 take that number and you know put together you know, whether it's a plan A and a plan B or whatever, in terms of how you might come up and deal with it. Um, you know, one of the things that is, you know, would normally be part of the process and that you, one of you all mentioned it a, a few minutes ago, which the question is going to be, well, you know, to what extent are you going to use any reserves to balance the 21 yeah. budget? Because, you know, obviously there's caution there because Lord knows what, 22 and beyond is going to be and so on. But, um, you know, that still becomes, that's always been a part of, uh, you know, when it comes down to the nitty gritty and putting a budget together, that's sort of the last piece that's sort of, okay, so what are we willing to use in terms of what we got? Because it's, it's limited. And if you, you know, put yourself in a hole one year, you're just starting the next year off in a worse place. And so, you know, we've been through all those arguments before, but that doesn't mean that's still not part of the process. So that, um, you know, my assumption is that, that that part is still to come. And, but before that, you got to look and you know, what you've asked us to do and look and see uh, what the picture looks like, you know, if you don't commit any reserves and um, clearly, you know, just looking at, you know, pulling 170,000 out of our budget um, is, um, you know, it's, that's not what you want to do, but uh, it's worth, I think, going through the process just to, just for awareness as to what it would mean. Um, you know, obviously, my concern, one of my concerns, would be that we need to, um, you know, at some point. I'll just say this: at some point in past uh, bad years for for school budgets your elective types of things like art and music um, have gone by the wayside because they're just, you know, you have to prioritize your classroom teachers and, and your special ed needs. And um, that has a long-term negative effect on the education. And, and it would, I would hope that we don't have to go through that again this time. Um, that would be really discouraging um, because, you know, that's, that is, those things are really an important part of the education that's offered in this community. And it's an important part in getting support for the education in this community. So um, I just hope we don't have to go there, but we got to deal with this problem. And so we don't deal with the problem by, like Tom says, sticking our head in the sand. Yeah. And, and you know, Peter, and, and I, so, but I, I think the most important thing is that you have to start having these discussions and, and and I'll 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 go I'll go one step further on 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 losing some of our our arts humanities portion of the thing. Look, I I think one of the most important thing um, that that a student has is the ability to to ex, expand differently, and everybody learns differently. Right. And I know personally, um, I did not do very well with foreign languages. But I could play the I could play the trumpet and I could play the tuba, and it was very similar to playing an instrument. is very similar to a language, and there's something that 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 makes things click in a 
brain that you're doing languages or, or instruments. And, and that's they're very important. And I would hope, I would hope that we don't take the easy way out and just cut those programs because they're easier to cut. Um, I, I think that they're, they're integral, having those are integral parts of, of learning. And I hope that we don't take that easy way out. But we have to start someplace, you know, and, and I think that I, I have confidence that, that Darius and administration um, will, will try to look at innovative ways to, and, and we all are, it doesn't matter. Every, every one of us that has, has a job or a business are trying different ways, just like Deb was just here a second ago, you know, selling groceries. I'm sure in her business plan 20 years ago when they're doing the blue hair in their business plan, selling groceries was not near business plan. But that's what they need right now. So. Okay, well, well like I said, we got a meeting on Thursday afternoon, 4 o'clock. Um, you know, people can, people can join in to the, the Zoom. The agenda is listed on the uh, uh, Frontier Union 38 website and the link for joining the meeting through Zoom is there as part of the agenda. You don't need any pass. You don't need any access uh, permission or anything like that. To, I just I went and looked earlier, and it's it's easy. Just go there, and you can click on the Zoom uh, information. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, I appreciate that, Peter. If I may, uh, thank you. Go ahead. For, yes, for that, Peter. I I hundred percent agree. Uh, and I also want to thank the select board for coming up with direction. Uh, we did ask uh, not to, to have to create a menu, but to, to be given a target. So we'll run those numbers and then we can talk about what that would look like. Um, and I, I do want to echo uh, both what Tom and Peter said uh, about specials, things like art and music, but also point out that uh, as you start to cancel things, uh, choice and charter out also becomes an issue. And as you, mm -hmm. if you say, oh, well, we have to have uh, a reduction in force in order to make things work, uh, you may have to pick up unemployment costs for people. So uh, we'll have to be very smart and careful. And uh, we'll, like, we'll work with the school administration to figure out what's the most sensible path forward and uh, get back to you with that. So thank you. I appreciate that, Greg, uh, as well as as well as Peter. Peter, I want to circle back to kind of make make the analogy, right? So, if the town is looking at these reductions, uh, the school from the state, right, and and that's kind of our basis, and the school should look at those reductions as kind of its basis. Uh, that still puts us in a position of about three hundred and forty thousand dollars of of uh, shortfall. So, you know, reductions in one area has a lasting impact, just as erosion of the capacity of the town to pay for future years has. And it's a, it's a, it's a delicate dance, and uh, we uh, look forward to the partnership, but I do consider it analogous. We're looking at those same reductions in revenues here on, our, on the town side in total, and want to put this forward as a unified message to 38 Frontier, as well as Franklin Tech. Hey, Scott. And hopefully it, hopefully it all works out great and none of it happens. But boy, it's a gloomy sky out there. Tom? Don't let Caitlin know it, but by us cutting our, our salaries out of the budget, we don't really have a problem on the town side any longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you're... Absolutely, I had no idea that seven thousand dollars was an, was going to be the tipping point. But had I known that, I would have given up that salary. That uh, what is it for the chair? Twenty two hundred dollars uh, a year. I would have given that up at least a year ago. Well, that that two hundred dollars Mike was talking about. That's two hundred thousand for the moderator. Yeah. Oh, oh. So quiet, quiet, quiet. Huh. Sure that. I didn't realize we, we, that. We can buy some hand sanitizer and a few sacks of flour. <laughs> So when we get back, there you go. Feet, when we get back on our feet, could I have the twenty two hundred dollars and then back pay for ten years? I've been doing this. Uh, we, uh, we can't sure. do back. We can't do back pay. All right, just all right. I'm just throwing it out there. All right, we can't do back pay. No PPP for the town. Got it. We do. We can, yeah, we no, can do back. Absolutely. We can do, 
We can do back pay, Caitlin, for three years, no more. Yeah, well, that's okay. This is my this is my donation. Ten years of my life. I feel the same way. I feel the same way every given week. Yes, that's okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's talk about air pack. Steve, why, why do we need air packs? And why do I have 1,400 pages of federal government stuff printed out, put in front of me? Well, where would you like me to start? Uh, uh, start with why we need $100,000 in air packs. Start with that. Okay. Well, the air packs are one of the primary components of our, uh, uh, our PPE for general firefighting and not looking at coronavirus True. stuff, anything like that, but they get an awful lot of use. Um, everything from car fires, house fires, smoke in apartments from cooking. Um, we had one over the weekend with marijuana smoke in an apartment was so heavy, it set off the fire alarm. Smoke. So certainly not gonna send people in to ventilate without infection. And over the years, they've become somewhat more sophisticated than they were initially. And that's why the price keeps creeping up like everything else. But uh, when it comes down to it, having an SCBA for each seated position in the fire truck is a requirement. I suppose you could find an attorney that would argue that, but um, probably a lot more that would argue it's a requirement. And the, um, the other interesting thing is having a full array of packs for each seated position is a requirement if you want to get any grant, FEMA, um, OSHA, what they want to see that. So it's the, the best practice, really a practical piece of equipment. And the, um, the long and the third of it is the ones that we have are getting old and will not be able to be used much longer without putting some money into them. And there's a couple of options there that really get us through a couple of years and potentially more costly than taking a big bite out of the, the Apple now with the money that we have put away. And uh, to get packed out that new fire truck, and then as the years go on, we'll have to figure out what we do next with the rest of the equipment that we need. So the initial pass that came forward, Steve, was from our chief was for, you know, a wholesale exchange. What I'm hearing now is a phased exchange. Well, precisely, because with all of the conversations surrounding our budget next year, capital requests, and so forth, um, it's looking less and less likely. That that be and while it's certainly not the ideal way to go, um, if we don't do something, we'll paint ourselves into a corner terribly for the upcoming years. And at least right. if we get one truck that fully outfit, um, we'll have that. And then the potential exposure going forward. Is hmm. So is, is the current plan that I see here for 38 and change uh, outfitting one truck? That's the new truck, I assume, or a truck, regardless. I don't really care which one it is. Yeah, that's our plan. And the reason we're choosing the new truck is twofold. One is we have money left over from that truck. Perfect. Um, that was from the, uh, the contract settlement that we had with Rosenbach. Yep. Uh, got about 15000 back if we delayed delivering it. And also... It is the um, now the first line truck that we have, so it makes sense to have the newest equipment in that vehicle because um, that's likely going to show up at the uh, show up at the fire first. Yeah. And so, of the thirty-eight of the thirty-eight thousand that's here, um, that's that's the the minus the fifteen, or my, basically minus the thirteen that's left over. Well, no, what, what that encompasses, the 38 is the cost for six packs, our lowest um, bid cost that I've gotten over the last several months for uh, six packs, six masks, and 12 air bottles. 
and yep. that total is 38 and change. And to satisfy that bill, we have 15,000 from engine two left over in that account. We have uh, right now about 2,000 our department equipment budget. Uh, we've, for a couple of years, we've been planning on this. So we've made some purchases in years past that opened up this year financially for us to spend that money. Um, we don't have any intentions of spending any more money this year. So we'll have some fuel, some other odd costs, but hopefully we'll have 16,000 to put against it. And then the remainder, um, going to ask for private donation to cover that. So Jeff, if I could, how does, how does this, uh, practice work out in the, in the bidding sense, right? You're talking about basically 38, $39,000. What are the thresholds for that? So in traditional procurement, um, it would under 50, between 10 and $50,000, you'd have to get uh, written price quotations from at least three vendors. Um, there's an alternative route, which is to purchase from the statewide contract. Um, and okay. you just look on the statewide contract, who sells fire equipment, um, and you reach out to them and you say, I'm going to use, and I think it's FIR 04 or FIR 04A. He said, I'm buying off the statewide contract. Uh, what's your price for the equipment we need? And then you would not have to get uh, multiple bids. Okay. So Steve, is that, is that the method you guys want to use? Well, I hadn't because we've gotten a pretty decent price. Scott negotiated uh, down to offering us a free air bottle that goes with the assortment for savings about 16, uh, I'm sorry, uh, about $6,000. I went on to Combine's best price I saw was for the Mass Fire Academy buying equipment directly from Scott, which I don't think we're going to be able to match because stipulated uh, an education discount. It was sizable, but it was pretty tightly written. Um, mm -hmm. I've been on the IPS section of Combine's. I'll admit I'm no expert on Combine's. Um, in fact, it crashed three times while I was on it, uh, <laughs> but we, um, IPS is not showing any discount for Scott air, air and fitting equipment. So I'm going to need to get some help from, from Jeff or somebody else to identify what that price would be if there is one just before we go forward. Uh, because as much as the folks at IPS have serviced us well over the years, I'm not necessarily going to. Um, trust their administrative team in providing us with the right price. We should double check that. Yeah. Tom or David, any thoughts on this? I, I like the, the phased approach. I think it makes a great deal of sense. Uh, obviously saying within the, in the four corners of procurement law makes, you know, makes us all happy and keeps us out of jail. And then, um, you know, obviously there's a need and what are your thoughts? I think the phased approach is probably the best one. At least we don't um, get ourselves into a nasty spot and, you know, we kind of deal with our budget as best we can. Because mm -hmm. that would be a big chunk to bite next year too, if, uh, especially if things get even worse. And so remember, we raise – go ahead, Jeff. I just want to make sure – um, we're talking about a fiscal year 20 purchase of the six air packs, right, Steve? Correct. Okay. So we sure we're all on the same page and then. Thank and you. The, the other thing is we will, if, if you read deep enough into that information, it'll become apparent that we do have to get nine more packs before 2023, 2024, whenever that next NFPA standard comes out or else we'll have to park a truck. Fair. I appreciate that, that warning. And that, that's, that's a horizon that we can work with. Tom, what do you think? Um, well, I think what we've been saying all along is that we need to look at creative ways to make things happen. And this is probably a, a, a little different, little, little creative, not, not Steve's first choice, but probably the choice that will work for this year. 
and um, that's what that's what we've asked, and I I think that's a good job, Stephen. Thanks. It's, um, you know, the the stuff isn't is not inexpensive. Um, we do use it an awful lot, and you know, creativity is not a problem, um, provided everybody's on the same page with what our a couple of years. You know, we can we can slice and dice and find all sorts of options. Nice. Uh, separate subjects, Steve, could you give me a call in the morning? Uh, capital planning group wants to meet at the fire station Saturday morning to take a look at cement wall request. Okay. I can give you a ring tomorrow morning. No problem. Great. Thanks so much. In a discussion around air packs. So Jeff, we got some homework, we work with the chief and uh, we'll figure out a uh, path forward with this. Okay. Great. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks, Chief. Um, dispensation, dispensing site plans, Tom. Anything new on that front or Jeff? Yes. Um, in, I hope I printed out the... Yes, it should be in your packet. Um, the Chief is also on to talk about the emergency oh, nice. site plan. Um, sort of a the one that's marked draft. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, exactly. yes, that's I love the draft. By actually, by the way, did your son write that? I like it. Well, that's a um, that's another cost savings measure. I don't have full Adobe on my computer here at the station, so what I did is I, I <laughs> put that into uh, um, paint and I hand drew that with a mouse. So. Love it. That's the poor man's Adobe right That's there. That's creative. <laughs> Love it. And it worked perfectly. I understood completely this was a draft. Perfect. Mr. Accomplo. So, so Mr. Mr. Chair, in, in my, my opinion, um, we, we have the Frontier EDS gets, has this uh, telephone call every Monday morning at 9 o'clock. We had another one yep. today. And one of the one of the things that came up a few weeks ago was that there was a problem. Um, if, if you watch on TV, many many of the test, testing sites and such are done outdoors uh, and are done yep. drive through. And and we have actually found over the years when when we've done the Frontier EDS have done EDS, we have found that we we have found that it, it works really well outside and. Um, we don't bring people together. Um, they stay in their cars, and, and, it, and it works best. But one of the things that was happening uh, down in, in, around the country is that these sites that were set up, if you had bad weather, in particular you had wind like we had Saturday and Sunday, um, your, your tents that you put up to protect your workers blow away. And so we, we, we were talking about that. And my thought was, is that Sunderland's very lucky is that we have a drive through public safety building. Yep. Um, so we, we asked the um, police and fire to look at putting a drive through um, together for the public safety in case that if, if you're, if it, if it was, cold and windy or severe weather, we wouldn't be able to do it outdoors. So that's why, and, and, and the chief has reasons why they don't want to go through the public safety complex. But to tell you the truth, um, I'd rather have to worry about decontaminating the, the public safety complex than have to worry about um, a site having to be canceled because our, our tent blew away. Right. Uh, and I, and I hope, I hope that can be um, conveyed to everybody that our first option is not to put it through the drive through as a, as a, for something on a convenience, but we have to have a plan um, and we need to practice it to make sure, make those plans work. And, and the chief has put up together a plan. I mean, I would have gone further. I would, I would have closed down, uh, I would have closed down river road. Um, and just allow people through that were using that, and I would have diverted them up Old Amherst Road and up Plum Tree to keep keep that that whole area thing. 
but I, I, I have, we have a draft and I think it's something that we can be begin to talk about. Um, but I think it's important. I mean, you know, you can't, you, you know, one of the, one of the things that we do really well is we, we, we learn from, from our mistakes and others' mistakes. And when, when I saw tents being blown away and people getting seriously injured and saying, we have to come up with a better way. So I think we have a good start, Scott. Yeah, the framework of the plan is, 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 is very um, detailed, and I appreciate that. The concern about River Road makes some sense, but that could be something that's added to this. This looks like it covers the insides and the outsides, uh, who's in charge of what, what tools are going to be used to implement. Nice job, Chief. Thank you. And, and, and don't forget, Scott, that this plan is not just for Sunderland. We, right. we, work, we work in conjunction with our, with our neighbors, Deerfield and Whiteley yep. and Conway and Leverett and others. And, and when, when we get vaccines, um, the, the, the state, will, state will give us vaccines and, the state, does, and I'll t the state does not look at the town of Sunderland and say, we're going to give you 2,000 vaccines. It looks at this area and, the front, and they look at the Frontier EDS system and they, and they want the Frontier EDS, which has 10,000 people. They want us to be able to offer services to those 10,000 people. So we'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll come up with it. We'll come up with a, a good plan. Just, we just got to work on it. Good. So we'll take this as homework. And uh, the, the, I, the, it's, it's too detailed to be a straw man at this point. But take this Absolutely. as homework, mark it up, and get comments back to the chief and Jeff uh, before our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had the, the cursor you've got, Chief. I wrote homework, but it's not nearly as jaunty as the word draft you had on there. I like it. Yeah, lots of practice. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Um, board updates. Well, Scott, did, we, did you finish everything on town meeting and elections? Did I miss it all? No, we've we've elected. You've been elected again. <laughs> I'm not up this year. Duh. Go ahead, town clerk. How'd you like to weigh in? Oh no, I didn't know if I missed it or. So we talked about town meeting being out here in the back behind the town office building because of infrastructure, infrastructure, as well as parking, as well as the ability to do spacing. I'm all for that. And there's electricity. And there's electricity. We also talked about it being at four, four o'clock on the 6th as opposed to 7 p.m. on the 5th. Does that give you time to get out of your election mode and get oh, into town yeah. meeting mode and get, try to get it, get it done in one day? I can, I can start at 2 if you want. How about... Four, like four Mike said, moder moderator four. said, if you start at four, they'll be hungry at five. <laughs> four o'clock is fine. So, so cool. Tom, Wendy? Yes. I don't know if we really need a tent. What if it's 100 If we feet? don't. <laughs> well, it'll be a short so. meeting. It'll make, yeah. but I think Mike, I think Mike had, Mike had a, a couple points in, in, if you're if you're looking at spreading people out at six feet apart, um, you'd need one hell of a big tent, maybe maybe bigger than we could put up. But that's a that's an area of focus we can look at. Yeah, it's expensive, and I think if you're going to get a tent, you you've got to do it soon. Right. Because I know I talked. To one and you know there's already there were already two towns yeah I think, it, I think even if you have a little bit of something for rain older people I mean I, I don't think a tent will would hurt and you can go outside the bounds of the tent let's talk yeah. about that with the with the uh, Jeff to see what's available uh, in and around it, if there's a, a seating area to the point where you need, you know, basically 36 square feet for every single person, you know, a big tent's going to house not too many people. 
Right. And you have to go in one way, out the other. and Exactly. Yeah. I just did some quick math. If you have a 30 by 100, which is a big tent, it'll hold 83 people. And that's if you're sick. That's not leaving room for a table. And so you're going to be maybe 75, maybe 70 to 75 people. Um, I think... So, Mike, I, anyway. I think theirs is four, 40 by 180. What did you say? Oh, well, about I, I got to redo my math then, Wendy. You're messing me up. No, no, no. Is it about the same? <laughs> 40 by know. 180? Yeah. Can we, get into okay, we, size? can we get 10 more people in? That's 200 people. Now you're talking. Well, we usually only have 125. Okay. And that's our norm. So I, I don't, you know. We'll take it out of the town for yeah. budget. <laughs> I think there's a COVID budget. If I remember correctly. I'll tell you, she, she's amazing when she comes to the budgets, huh? Don't tack that town clerk budget. <laughs> with, with a tent that size, you should get three rings. I I just I, I'm point. just thinking so, that if it rains or if some people want shade. I, you know, maybe having something and then... Uh, have you researched you have nothing, you have this tent's available? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to let them know soon. Is this like a fantasy size tent or do you, is there actually one out there? <laughs> no, there it, it is. There is one out there. Um, okay, okay. There is one out there and wait, let me go. It's 40 feet by 180 feet for $3,150. Wow. And then so they have... Could, could I... Go ahead, Wendy. No, go ahead. No, please. I was I going to say that it, oftentimes under a tent, the acoustics are just horrible. That's true. That is true. Th then everybody's going to feel right at home and think they're in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 great, it, great. It begs. It, That's what we want. It begs, it, it begs the question, you know, if we don't have good weather, do you simply postpone and you know, have, have or announce a weather date. Well, I, I do think once you start getting into too close, then you might as well be in a building. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. Oh, that's you know, I, immediately. I mean, right. You know, could, it's bigger than the gym. Would, you know, would the school allow us to let people in the regular way? And everybody check in the regular way, and we'll do six feet of tape all the way to the door. And then when it's time to leave, everybody can go out that side gym door and go through a classroom and out the front that way. We or they can go back the way with, we came in, because everybody's going in the same way, and we're all leaving at the same time. Yep. So, I, you know, I, I still like it, Scott. I still like it during the daytime. And I like it outdoors. I think I think that yeah. it's, it's 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 I think that that's a better way to do it right now. I, I like, well, I I like people... the rain date idea, but yeah, yeah exactly. You just set it up ahead. Yeah, we just set up a rain date. Yeah. And 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 Wendy, maybe you're right. Maybe and, and again, I know I know when we did our grad when I graduated. If I can remember that long ago from from college, <laughs> that was a still those were the same thing that the dean was make the same thing why he tried to make us not have a, a an outdoor graduation sound just like the town clerk now. So you could be Dean Mott at some time, dear town clerk. I <laughs> did. There I go. I know now, and 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 so what we did is we just at that time we just talked to the, the tent rental places and just got a couple small tents for those people that needed a tent so i i mean you could get a couple small tents if people want to go under the, the tent they can have that ab ability you know? why don't we just go to mike's mates they have yeah, a because little... at that at that time of the year it would be hard to get an area clear enough for people to sit but yeah okay I, I, I was only half joking about that. But yeah, I know. I hope that's true. But the popcorn, the popcorn, think about this. Well, the sun goes <laughs> down, you know, it, it's not quite as hot at four o'clock. So, right, right. So, you guys want to go without a tent? Bring your own chairs. Yes, I yeah. think. 
and mark out the grass on six feet yes facings yes yep okay sounds good to me you know you know you're gonna win no that sounds fine no i know it's gonna it's gonna be smelting hot and there's gonna be no wear air movement and you're gonna say i told you so i told you so and and murder hornets murder <laughs> there you yeah. go <laughs> we have we have electricity we have electricity. That's what we need. So we could have there. some big fan from one of the farms to just blow air. And then we won't be able to there hear. There you it. go. There you go. So let's, let's continue refining our plan for having annual town meeting. We'll change the date and time to 6 6 Saturday at 4 p.m. behind the town office building. Am I hearing that in the form of a motion? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, motion. Wait, 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 before we go any whoa, further. What? Town clerk? I'm okay with it if Mike's okay with it. Can, can yeah, you want to set up a rain date at the same time? Yeah, but I'm just wondering. Good point, Mike. Can we legally yeah. do this? Can we legally do this? And what do we have to do to make it comply with what the state state's saying we need to do? Well, I'm wondering if you set it for the state and it rains, then I, I wonder if it's smarter to go to the, the town offices open the meeting um and then recess it or you know like like we did for the snowstorm we did yes yep 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 i i'm wondering if that might be you know just continue it to uh another date and that way you kind of have a better idea of the weather forecast so yeah that's you know, fair Right. We can, we can send out, if it's a really miserable day, we can send out a CT connect to the town that day saying we're going to go open and postpone. And at that point there, announce the next date. Right. And we did instead that. Instead of setting it now. Yeah. Okay. Instead of setting two dates. Right. Yep. 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 I'm, I'm fine with that because we've done that before. Okay, so, so we'll still have yes. a discussion around the 6th at 4 p.m. behind the town office building. Not hearing any, is there a motion? Motion. Second. There's a motion made and seconded. All those in favor of holding the annual town meeting here at the town office building on June 6th at 4 p.m. outdoors. Signify by saying aye. 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 Three to zero. So again, our protocol will be if, you know, if it's great, either way that morning, we'll send out a CT connect to everybody saying, hey, weather looks good. Town meeting's on. Bear in mind spacing, bear in mind face masks, bear in mind all those things. Or if it's miserable, hey, town meeting's postponed. We're going to, we are going to go. We're going to open the meeting with the moderator. Our only motion is going to be to postpone the meeting or to, to table the meeting until the, this date's certain. Okay. All right. Clerk, so, anything so, else? Yes. So, so, Mr. Chair, can we ask the town clerk to review what someone, a voter, has to do to be able to vote in the election instead of coming in to vote on the 6th. Okay, yes, because yeah. we are strongly, strongly encouraging voters to vote by early voting or absentee. Um, you can find the application online. I know some people have said that, you know, they have to really find it. But if you go to the search box and do early voting, or early voter application, it will come up. Or I call me and I'll mail it to you, to anyone. Uh, they'll fill out the application. I will send a ballot to them. And it's just like absentee voting. And the ballots will go in the machine on June 6th during the election hours. We would, you know, for everybody's safety, we just strongly encourage voting absentee. The sample ballot is online, uh, so that can be viewed there. Uh, 
there are no contests and there are no questions. If that matters. To okay. Anyone. So again, hearing from hearing from the clerk, it's important to bear in mind. You can find the information on our website, and we're strongly encouraging people to do basically, you know, absentee balloting or mail balloting. Fill out the form. She'll mail the ballot, and it'll get counted only on the sixth, just like they do during any other absentee. Anybody who's voted absentee knows how easy the system can be. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, and we'll do whatever. I, you know, I dropped off two applications at people's houses today. So, I mean, nice. we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to be accommodating. You know, we, we want to make it easy for people to vote. We don't want this to be a hindrance at all. So, if you, you know, you don't have a printer, you don't have a computer, you know, just call me, 665-1442. Copy. Okay, thank you. Town Administrator hey. updates. Um, uh, two quick updates. Um, one, Eversource reached out to the town to schedule a poll hearing poll related hearing. to the reconstruction on North Main Street. Um, I didn't know if the board wanted to talk about an agenda or we can just schedule. I don't know when you uh, want to pull. The poll hearing that will have to be done by phone, obviously. I assume they're going to contact the abutters, again, yes. via phone. Yep. And so there's a standard form application that comes to us, and uh, the poll hearing will be, a, will be in this format. Yep. yep. Um, so just, and then the other was um, last week we'd begun a discussion about um, – hiring an appraiser for North Main Street. And yep. um, there, I don't, didn't see an actual uh, vote that that was okay to proceed. So I just wanted to what, ask. What's if, the funding source? And what's uh, the budget? That would be chapter 90 funds and the budget is not quite determined yet because we're still hoping that people come in and, and are donating uh, land, uh, donating the easements. The easement. um, however, we're projecting that a majority will at least want appraisals. And so at the higher end, we're thinking it'll be close to, but below $50,000. So that's the, the procurement we would go through. So we don't get a lot of Chapter 90 money in any given year. What does Chapter 90 look like for a $50,000 hit for appraisals for this project on North Main Street? Right. What's our starting balance and what, where, does, where does this impact? My understanding is – where did I write it down? Um, I think that we had um, – I believe it was about about – there it is. Um, currently, we have about two hundred and eighty thousand dollars in Chapter Ninety funds. Mm -hmm. um, so it would it would put us at about two thirty. Two thirty. Okay. Um, so can you just close the loop with George to see what his plan was for Chapter Ninety for the current year, or is it going to continue to accumulate? And does he have a big project in mind for you know years forward? Um, and with that, with that information, I'd be happy to, you know, entertain a motion to hire the appraiser is knowing that the project is still got to move forward. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think there are any, uh, big projects. He, he mentioned old Amherst road was one. Um, and then the other would be the rest of the North main street that wasn't part of the mass dot project. Got it. David or Tom, any concerns about the potential use of Chapter 90 for this piece of North Main Street? I would say we had other places to come from, Scott, but now with the uh, revenue stream look like being depleted, I don't know where that money would be coming from. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It just it, yeah. it tears on my heartstrings a little bit to use Chapter 90 for appraisers, but it, yeah. it, it ha passes the straight face test because you got to have it for the project. Correct. Right. 
And it's a temporary easement too. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah exactly. it's a construction easement. Nobody's losing any. It's important to bear in mind. No one's losing any land. This is yes. simply a, a construction easement. So hopefully folks will be aware of that and donate it. Right. And, and it will be, and if something happens, a truck drives on, it'll probably be restored to better than what it is right now. So that's true. absolutely the goal time. That's a good point. Yep. Okay. So Jeff was looking for a motion to hire the appraiser. Is there, is there one of those? Motion. Motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Jeff, there's your vote. Thank you. Go hiring. I'll come okay. back. Okay. With... Any other administrative? Any other news from the administrative basement? No. <laughs> nope. Good. Okay. Uh, our next meeting is going to be by uh, a week. It's May 11th. Wait a minute. That's this week. Wait a minute. This oh, is May 11th. Nope. Did I not update Just that? May 18th. May 18th. Apologies. Five eight five eighteen. I wrote my own work ticket this morning. I'm like, wow, it's May 11th already. So uh, six thirty, same time, same format. Um, any select board updates that we haven't covered? No. Tom, you all set? All set, Scotty. Okay. Uh, not hearing any more select board updates. I want to thank everybody. everybody for participating. I want to thank the Board of Health and the police for, you know, making sure that uh, we're continuing to be smart about our public safety because it's our public safety. That said, Chief, I'll talk in the morning. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Aye.